In the world of M&A, there are numerous strategies for creating wealth. Entrepreneurs and investors might roll up profitable companies to create economies of scale, acquire diverse companies that share operational excellence, or take high-risk, high-reward path of acquiring distressed companies for their asset value. Today, we're diving deep into the high-stakes world with special guest John Raymond. John has made a name for himself by acquiring three distressed companies in 12 months, a trucking company and two furniture companies. We're going to explore how he identified these opportunities, the dynamics of the acquisitions, and his strategies for turning these companies around. So whether you're an aspiring entrepreneur, investor, or simply fascinated by this type of deal, you're going to find this an interesting conversation. Well, welcome to the Top M&A Entrepreneurs, John. Thanks for being on the show. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me on. We've been working on coordinating this for, for a minute. For a little time, yeah. <laughs> so let's kind of talk about your story here. You yeah. and I, uh, we had a conversation about this, and you have worked on these, bought these, or came in as part partner of these turnaround situations. But let's kind of rewind a little bit and talk about your origin story. What were you doing before this? Okay. Um, so I, I worked fast food for a lot of years. Uh, that's my like, first job and, and whatnot. And then I got into business in Salt Beach. So I was Salt Beach, small businesses with government grants, government contracts, like helping them find and apply for that stuff. We were doing business plans, pro formas, like all of this stuff. And I did that for, I don't know, seven or eight years. And yeah, is this for that, DOD or local stuff? No, this is just like, so I would help, I would help 70 ish clients a week. Uh, basically, this company would get needs, and I would just sit and I would talk to these business owners about, hey, here's how you write a business plan. Here's the framework that you use. Like, here's here's everything that you do to get a business plan ready so that you're bankable. And then if you're, you have the ability to apply for government contracts, here's how you register. Here's how you apply. Here's, if you're a nonprofit or whatever, here's how you apply for grants. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of bad information about grants, and I won't dig into that here, but, um. And so I did that for a lot of years, and I just noticed that these businesses were all struggling, and they would have financial problems, but the majority of the financial problems came from operations. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't just money problems. They didn't need just more money because if you give them more money, then they're still going to run through it. That's so always the next problem. Yeah. 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 And so I'm like, I need to be able to do this on a bigger scale. And how do I do that? Um and so I just started to try and get money from investors, started reaching out to angel investors and VCs and stuff like that. Like, hey, here's what I want to do. And the first question was almost always, but what education do you have? And at the time, I just had a high school diploma. I didn't, no education, no nothing, no formal training, just had been helping these businesses. And so I went back to school and got an MBA in finance. Yeah. Like, did it's the first four years of my undergrad, and they got the, the two year MBA from Washington State. And, uh, then I'm like, okay, well, now I've got this education. I'm going to go get a job so I can start working on paying off some debt and get things situated while I start launching this, what I want to do. Um, so that's how it all really started is to go back to the, the origin of like the inspiration hit me back in like 2012. So this is a, an overnight success story of 12 years um, <laughs> in the making. So, you yeah. know, it's, it's, been, it's been an interesting journey and I've learned – so much along the way that, that hopefully helps people and and that they're able to to resonate with some of what I've done and what they've probably been through too that you know the sleepless nights the pain the stress the, the everything so yeah. that's that's how it all started and then um you know get through school Man, what spend, did you do to get this ball rolling where you start seeing some success in these yeah. clients well yeah. um so I started, I started working at a job. I just I was developing the ideas and working on like what I wanted to do. Um, I knew I wanted to, and this is, this is big picture. This is where I'm going. I want to have a private equity fund that invests in companies and does real estate projects and so on. So private equity for both mergers and acquisitions and real estate. And I want to add a nonprofit partner. There's a 501c3 that can get access to grants, capital, joint venture, and help communities. So that's the big, like, where I'm going type scenario. Yeah. Um, and so while I was working at this job, I learned how to register a 501c3, not for profit. And so I did that. I, have a, I successfully registered a nonprofit for tax exemption. 
And now I'm working on picking out the private equity piece. So yeah. um, I went through all of that, learned how to do all of that, and then um, started working on acquiring companies. And uh, so during that, that time, Pause. Yeah, there was no audio there. So I meant to... Oh. Okay. Um, so to jump back, I I think I was talking about like so I, I started working and trying to figure out like who's out there that's doing this right now. Yeah. I, I need Do, doing uh, what exactly? You're talking about buying, buying companies, companies but what yeah. like well run companies, enduringly profitable, ten, twenty years old, what? Like what? at the time I didn't know. I just at the time okay. I'm, I'm like I knew I'm naive. Like, hey, I'll just go buy a company. Like, it doesn't matter what company. I'm confident in my abilities to be able to grow and scale whatever <laughs> I get. I see I lessons don't know, coming. Man, like forty year old know it all. I guess I don't know. Yeah. Um, and the reason that I the, the reason that I wanted to own companies so badly is because I make a terrible employee. Um, I I don't like taking action. Um, excuse me, let me, let me rephrase that. I don't like doing something just because somebody said you should do this. What's the why? Uh -huh. What, how do we make things better? How do we improve processes? Like let's actually make this thing work instead of you hear the excuse that it's job security, right? Like, well, if I keep fixing this problem over and over and over again, I have job security and that's not good enough for me. One yeah. of the phrases that killed me as a manager was, this is the way that it's always been done. Okay, and what does that mean? Um, and so I started looking for people that were doing buying companies, like whatever company. I didn't even care. I just wanted to find somebody that I could work with to figure this out. I have the background in finance. I know how operations work. If I can just find somebody that's that salesy person that can help raise money, that'll be perfect. Like that's the perfect marriage, right? Like what I'm not good at in Mary, it was what? Somebody else is good at. And um, so I, I listened to a bunch of podcasts and I found this guy. And I, I won't mention the name because that's really not the, the point here. Um, but we started working together and he's like, hey, I have this company. They need $10,000 for inventory. Cool. I sent the person yeah, so $10,000. You 000. found a company that was no, for he had sale? Company. Oh, he, he had, had the company. company. Oh, okay. It's a startup and she needs an investor. I'm like, perfect. Like, it couldn't be better. I need something to invest in. I want to invest in the company to get equity. Here's an opportunity. Like, the investment's 10000 You're buying her inventory. No problem. Mm -hmm. So I said the girl $10,000. Just, like, created a promissory note or a, a convertible note and sent her ten grand. Um, and the terms were supposed to be three years payback or three months payback. Um, it took two years. Um and that's, you know, naive on my part, right? Like, I'm going to be able to turn this money in 90 days, no problem. Um, and so... I'm so smart. That's not <laughs> so smart. I'm just so good at whatever I do. Because I'm so also good working pick, a full-time job. That know what they're talking about. They right. know what they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And so I did. And, and when that happened, it started this, like, whole steamroll of, of events happening, which was good. Um, and the company has gone on to do like some pretty amazing things already like she's been featured in like vanity fair and is growing this cosmetics brand and everything like that so she's she eventually amazing. turned it into a success it has been doing really well um right now so mm -hmm. um, and i have some communication with her and she's doing great and her and her husband are both entrepreneurs so it's it, i think it's even better but and was um, that was that uh, investment for equity or is it just a loan 10 it was uh, a 10, convertible loan. note but I decided to just take the cash out. Okay. I didn't want to convert um, just a niche that I didn't know a whole lot about. Uh, again, the, the wisdom came after the investments. Um, she does a great job and it's a great company and it's doing really good, but it's not something I, I saw myself being a part of long term. God, sorry, hold on. Bless you. I didn't get that mute button. I couldn't find it real quick. So I have to go back and fix that. <laughs> I couldn't find it on the bottom there. <laughs> All right. That makes for some good be real. Oh, it, no, but, I'm kidding. Uh, no. Yeah. So I, so I invested in this company. And, and so when that happened, 
this dice was like, oh, well, cool. Well, let's start working together to, to build up this this thing. And I get deal flow nonstop. And that's the lot. He gets people bringing him stuff constantly. Like, I would get... What's he do? Why, why, why is he a center of influence? Attracts mm, them? Because he's on social media a lot. He gets on a lot okay. of podcasts. Right. He talks to a lot of people. He gets in a lot of rooms. Um, and would so, I know it, him? And I'm not going to name his name. Would I know I, him? In the I don't know. I don't know if you would or not. Right, I'll, well, I'll share it after cool. the fact. Like maybe we can like cut that part. Like I'll, I'll share it after the fact. Yeah. I got two of them that 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 uh, yeah. And it's more like again, it, it it's not about them. It's I learned a lot from working with them, so it's not complete hate towards them. But what they said they could do didn't even match up with what actually happened. If that makes sense. Yeah, you can still learn a lesson based upon fictional yeah. characters. Uh, because that's your experience, right? So, so we met and and we started. This is during COVID, so this is 2021. Like I think 2021, 2020, 2020. Yeah, 2021. Um, and then I started working with him, and it was just project after project after project after project. Like just holy crap, right? All of these people, and he's mentioning all these names, and I think that probably should have been a big indicator of. He's throwing out all these names of like celebrities and famous people and athletes and stuff. He's and name like, dropping. Kind of dropping like yeah. crazy. Um, and so we go and, and we start working with trying to acquire companies and doing consulting and stuff like that. And we acquire a couple of companies. Um, a lot of it was no, no money out of pocket. Some of it was um, come in and just help us. We'll give you equity. Like you guys know what you're doing. Consulting in, for equity gets. Consulting yeah. for equity or come in, help us consolidate this debt. You're able to raise money so easily, like come in, raise some money, capitalize us a little bit better, and we'll give you equity. But they were giving us equity right away. Like the minute we would sign paper, we were getting equity. And what um, kind of companies were these? They e-commerce were, stores. They were e-commerce. apparel brands. They were, um, or some of the other ones that we did. One was a recreational peer-to-peer lending company. Just, just you name it, like across the spectrum. Like there wasn't like one specific niche because he gets deals from anybody and everybody. Um, people that have food and restaurants and just yeah, all over the place. Um, yeah. And but after a while, the things weren't hitting right, right? Like we're we're getting paid to do these things, and he's this expert marketer and capital raiser, and we're not raising money and we're not marketing. There's something I like. It, so this you're, isn't hitting you're right. not marketing for the company, like the consulting for equity. We want you to come in and bring more customers to us, and that's not yeah. happening. Right. That's not happening at all. Like the marketing isn't happening. The email campaigns aren't going out like right. Um, there was one <clears throat> apparel brand that hired us to do some some marketing campaigns, right? Like some some ads for Instagram. And the copy was wrong. Like they had the wrong complete dates on it. And she's like, this isn't right. And it, oh, well, like, whatever. I'm like, that's, that's, no, that's not how that works. So the, the obviously the, the, the warning lights start going off. Right. Um, and so then we end up at an event that was claimed to be at South by Southwest. But what it actually was, was some of that outside of Austin, just at the same time of South by Southwest. So we're, at South by Southwest and um, we're working on this deal and he calls me up one night and he's like, hey, I need you to get the contract ready for this acquisition. They're going to let us take over the company, a million dollar purchase price. Our first payment isn't due until 90 days. And that's, you know, probably everybody that listens to your podcast, that's their like dream situation. Like, they're going to give me a company and I don't have to pay them for three months. Like literally yeah, that's zero. A deferred down payment. I, I rarely, <laughs> rarely see that, right? But that's that that was the, the intended agreement. He's like, I need you to draft it up and do it over for signature. I'm like, he's like, I'll send you the details. So I'm like, okay, cool. So the next morning I reach out to him and I'm like, hey, you never sent me anything. I can't draft up the contract. I need to get it signed. Like, if they're ready to go, let's go. And he's like, Oh, we gotta take you care of no big deal. It's all signed. We're good to go. Oh, cool. Well, that's awesome. So I he just got to sign with you on, with it or just now, hold on. It sounds I'm like getting there. I'm yeah. getting there. <laughs> this is where it all blew up. Um, and so 
I reach out to their attorney, not knowing, like, oh, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I'll just reach out and get a signed, and get a signed copy. I'm like, hey, can I get a signed copy for our records? I heard you guys did the deal. He's like, yeah, great, no problem. I'll send it over. I get the copy of the contract, and I'm like, what the actual... On the contract, it says the name of the company we were acquiring, and then it lists his company. Not our company, it, his, his company. And I'm like, no, uh-uh, this is not right. So I reach out to him, and I'm like, hey, what's, why is your company's name on there? And he's like, oh, so-and-so, and we were working on some other project with a big high-profile um, person that was a CEO at a massive company, right? Like, so, um, and he says, oh, so-and-so wanted it in a clean holding company for the cap table. I'm like, okay, fine. You know, I, I can understand that. Um, I mean, I'm, like, re- I'm trying to help me out. Sure. I can understand that. I need a new holding company. That's what he told you. Yeah. He, he, he said, yeah. He, well, well, not I, new. Yeah. Is his, the, the company that he signed the contract with was part owner in our company. So I had my equity held with one holding company and he had his with all, another holding company. And that's the company that he used to sign the contract. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense because you're holding our company with that. It doesn't make any sense. So your cap table is not necessarily clean. Right? You're invested in other projects. Yeah. Um, and so I reached out to this guy. I got his phone number. I first name basis. We did a, a really cool um, event where we broke a world record at Mile High Stadium. So I, I know they got like I just reached out to him and said, "Hey, what's what's the deal? Like, what's going on?" And that wasn't the situation at all. Like he didn't know anything about it. He hadn't been on any of these calls that this person claimed that he was on. He's like, I don't know anything about it. Um. So that was like, okay, I'm good. I'm done. Like, I'm out. Like, see you later. You yeah. can keep you can keep doing whatever you're doing, man. Like, you're good. Go do your thing. I'm going to go off and just start my own thing. Um, yeah. Let me ask you about <laughs> this. And did, were you talking to your wife about this? And did she have any gut instinct about it? She did. <laughs> she did. She did. So we, we went to an event in Long Beach. She had been kind of like bringing up things like prior to. Um, and it kind of been like, yeah, something just doesn't feel right about this. Like she'd only met him a couple of times, like, so not like a, a huge relationship type, you know, where they knew each other very well. And we talked to a really good day. We went and did a bunch of events together. She went and participated. Um, and she went to one with us in Long Beach and that was in April of 22, I think it was. And after that event, she's like, you need to just get your one. You need to run away as fast as you can. Um, and that's that's essentially where we just kind of like cut everything off. Yeah. Um, so what 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 did he do that changed her or solidified her opinion of him? Well, it was you know one telling her what was happening, right? Like obviously what was happening. Yeah, yeah. But then yeah. when we were at this event, so then it was a charity event in Long Beach that we went to. Um, huge charity event that was on a battleship and. She was, he was basically bad mouthing me to her when I was not around. And she's like, You know what he's saying about you, right? Like, he's telling everybody that all of these failures are your fault. And the reason that you haven't gotten any good deals is because it's your fault. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> well, that's great. That's, that's good to know. I right? like this. You know, I'm like, This is, this is not cool. So, yeah, so that was, that was the unraveling of that particular partnership, right? Like, so, um, but yeah, so it was it was definitely an interesting journey getting to that point, right? Like a lot of bumps and bruises along the way, just in that one year. Learned a lot about private equity, learned a lot about funds, set a fund up with a couple of people, and then that fell apart. Like so a lot of failures and things where it was like, Hey, this is the next, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it, I'm hitting on the door, I'm there, and then just you just, feel like you're getting at the. At I feel bats. like I'm just getting it's my not butt kicked. Connecting the ball yeah. with the bat, yeah. yeah, every single time. But you know, yeah. every one feels worse and worse and worse as it's going along, and it's kind of like, well, what are you doing here? Like, is this going to work out? Like, are are you that guy? Um, keep making so mistakes. Then, you keep making yeah, mistakes. Keep making and mistakes. Feel like, like, yeah. And and you know, it's it's crazy because you talk to people about like manifestation, and somebody was telling me, well, you're manifesting this. I'm like, am I? <laughs> It's not what it feels like to me, but, you know, who knows? Um, but, yeah, so that happened all, like, 21 to 22. And then in 22, I met another guy that 
I have this business. You can buy it. I'll owner finance it to you 100%, nothing down. It's a freight brokerage. I'm like, I don't know anything about freight brokerage. I'm really hesitant to buy this from you because I don't know anything about the industry. I don't know anything about the business. No. Wait, so wait, where, where did you find this? How did you come across this guy that just says, I'm going to give, essentially give you the business him. and I'll be the bank? Yeah. I met him at one of the events that I had gone to. Okay, so it was another so, one of those face to face kind of events. It was, was a face to face. It was a networking event at a racetrack. Um, and I met him, and he's like, Yeah, I've got a freight brokerage. I have this old MC number. And it's, you know, an old MC number is worth a lot of money because they, they provide value, right? Like, it, so freight brokerage, for those that don't know what it is, essentially you have a company like, let's say, Coca Cola, right? And Coca Cola has pallets and shipping containers of Coke to move. Well, they usually will hire a broker to connect with a carrier, so a truck driver or a boat or a train or whatever, and they they broker that freight from one destination to another. And those are hard to get, broker they, license? Well, broker licenses aren't necessarily hard to get, but seasoned broker licenses are hard to get. Seasoned broker licenses, okay. Yeah, so a seasoned one is anything over in a couple of years old. So my this broker license is like 20 years old. I'm like, okay, yeah. well, this has some value. Right. Like, but I don't know anything about this industry. Like, I just know zero. And he's like, that's okay. I will stay on and I will help you get contracts because he did that for 15 years. I'm like, okay, cool. So, this works. But why you? Why, why are you like, hey, this is the guy that's going to solve my problems? I'll still work in a business, but similar visions, right? Like, he couldn't own because of some agreement that he had with the company that he took the MC from. He couldn't own more than like nine and a half percent or something like that. Because like a non compete clause or some kind of thing in the contract that the um, he had back then, I don't remember all the specifics. Um, I'm like, okay, cool. If you're going to actively participate and if you're going to actively help get freight and do what you say you're going to do, I'll totally buy it. Like that makes total sense, right? Like I never saw myself going into the freight or trucking industry or anything like that. Um, and then so I'm like, okay, let's do it. So we signed the agreement on our financing on this MC ever. And so I start working on it, and I get the insurance, and I get the bond, and I get everything that I need, phone number for the brokering, I sign up for all of these software systems that you need to track freight rates and all this stuff. And the dude literally just disappears. <laughs> I see him on social media Whoa. all the time. I see him posting on social media all the time, but I can't get him to reply to a text message that I've sent. And so, it's like, what is going on? What was your like, conclusion about that? He just wanted to unload it? It's still up in the air. Um, it's it's an active thing that we're working through, um, but it's it it led me in a direction to where, you know, I, I won't dig too much into that situation, but it led me to a direction of like, why do I keep picking up with these people? Why don't I just go myself? Why don't yeah? Well, are are you? Why are these people attracted to me? Who am I that these oh, yeah. people are attracted to? Well, not only that, but. It, I, I get why they're attracted to me because I see, I see a big vision, right? Like I see a big picture. I just explained in the beginning, like this is what I'm going for. And so when you tell people that you've got that kind of vision, but you can see things at a very granular level, it, it makes it like, oh yeah, I want to work with this guy. And he's got a finance degree. He knows numbers. He knows how to do valuations. He knows how to do CFO work and bookkeeping and contracts and right, like, and so. I get why people are coming to me, but at the same time, like I didn't see that I was providing value to anybody at the moment. So it was a really a lot of personal introspection at the time. Um, I yeah, was you're not serving out. the world and no. not actually seeing any results helping people. Yeah, like, yeah. So I, you know, just constantly beating myself up over it, and it's like, well, you know, when this started happening, I'm like, wait a minute, you don't need these guys for anything. Like, you don't need anybody else. You don't need other partners that aren't going to contribute and help and be part of the day-to-day. -day. And so I, I saw this quote on, online, and it said, you know, if you have to ask them to carry the bricks, they're not the right people. Right? Like, yeah. th th that's just that's the reality. Um, and so I, I finally just like, you know, screw it. I, I don't need anybody else. I know what the pieces of the cake of the freight industry are now. I'm just going to go out and start fire, acquiring those pieces, those ingredients. All right. Um, so I went and got a trucking company under contract. And and the thing that sucked about last year um, was my wife was diagnosed with cancer in mm. May of last year. 
Yeah. And that made last year just the hardest year of like, forget all that other stuff that happened. Like none of that stuff matters. That's why I'm so just like, you know, it, it's the network, right? Like it happened. I learned a lot. I'm not going to sit and be angry about those guys and let it consume me because, you know, I almost lost her. Right? Like that's, that's something that totally took over my entire year last year. Yeah. So um, she was diagnosed in May, and eight months later, she she was cleared. She went from radiation, uh, a radical surgery to live with the cancer, and now she's still here with me. So I'm lucky enough to be able to still have her and her health. Um, and so, but during all of that, I'm like, I just, I just need to push harder. I need to push harder. Yeah. I, need to, I need to grind more, not in like a uh, put my head down, but more of a how do I strategically make this work. I haven't had a job in two years. Like, I haven't been working in two years. Um, I've been able to generate enough income from the businesses of what I'm doing, consulting, so on, that I don't have to. Yeah. Um, and so I went and acquired a trucking company. So and where did you find the lead? So I started on Biz by Cell. Yeah. Um, I started on Biz by Cell, and I just started... Yeah, you know, my hobby on Sundays, and, and people may laugh at this, my hobby on Sunday is to pull up an app on my phone. It's it's basically biz by cell, but it's called something else. I don't remember what it's called. Uh, but I'll just go through and I'll just look for businesses for sale. And I just like check them, put them all in my cart, and then I inquire about all of them. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I get a series of NDAs, I sign them all, and then I start looking through the financials. And the, the crap that you see online is just insane. I like that. What the would you say brokers, that number is? Nine, nine out of ten, it's crap. I would say it's higher than that. It's like nine and a half. But it's nine and a half. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, not to get off track too much, but it, like I inquired into this marketing company the other day, and marketing is a very strategic reason why and that is like right, like you go out and acquire a bunch of businesses, you need somebody to do the marketing. Well, why not own a marketing company yourself? Right, same thing with accounting. Uh, accounting firms, yeah, yeah. same reason. Um, but one was this lady sent me this marketing company. She's like, I want one hundred and thirty-four thousand for it. I'm like, so, okay, like that's for entire year sales last year, and she's down eighty percent this year in revenue. And you, you, I'm like, well, if we're going to do this, then I would want like serious portion of her finance. Like this, this doesn't even make sense to buy this for this. Like your net profit last year was like sixteen grand. Um yeah. and you expect, you know, so like that doesn't make any sense. But people get these and then you've got these brokers that like put these pie in the side dreams for these people to like, hey, your company's totally worth a million dollars. Like I had one that I was working on as a trucking company. He had four really old trucks that kept breaking down. Um he did have some contracts, but they weren't like guaranteed contracts with some dairy farmers in uh, Florida. And a broker reached out to him and said, this company's worth a million dollars. I'm like, well, your net revenue, or your, your, your SPE, your EBITDA, you know, it was a, a similar LLC. Um, whichever terminology you want to use for that um, was like $134,000, right? Like he's not taking a salary. He's not driving. It's, it's his drivers doing everything. And his trucks are you know, 15, 20 grand a piece each. Right, like doesn't have what? any trailers. Those are pretty old trucks, or really old. Yeah, they were old. Yeah, they were twenty fourteens, and they were in bad shape. Yeah. So you figure fifteen thousand each. So that's four times fifteen. That's sixty thousand dollars, right? And you're doing one hundred and thirty a year. You know, even if you do a three X multiple, this company's still only worth like three fifty four hundred max. Right. Right. Well, the. the the broker said a million dollars in me. So then he's anchored to, I'm only selling for a million. Yeah. Sorry, man. Like, that's just not going to work. Like, there's no way this sells for a million dollars. And this is the company dollars. you bought? Or no, this, no, no. No, this is one just that some I, other, yeah, This yeah. is just one that I was looking into to explain, like, that yeah, the, yeah. the yeah, majority yeah. of them are garbage. And and you get these brokers that tell them that they can sell them for this, and there's no systems in place. There was no, there was no dispatching. There was no manager. There was no anything, right? Um, But the... So that my to to jump back to why I got to that, that's what I do on Sunday mornings. I sit in bed for while well, we just hang out, have coffee and whatever, and I just inquire about this. Yeah. I just spend time going through like P and Ls and balance sheets and looking at numbers and, and either writing LOIs or asking more questions and trying to get as much information out of the seller and the broker 
as I can before I even dive to an LOI. Yeah. So tell me like, this trucking company that you bought. It was on Biz Buy Sell. How, it was on Biz Buy Sell. It how wanted half a, half a million dollars. Half a million dollars. Where was million. it located at? It's in Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. So yeah. how are you going to manage that in Houston, Texas? You're well, in you trucking company. You can yeah. put anywhere, right? Like the trucks are on the road. It's not like yeah. they were, they, I mean, they had a lot that they were parking at. Um, but you know, you can park in a truck stop, you can park in a truck pay lot. Like you, you, the trucks don't have to be stationed anywhere and you can pick up loads from wherever. Right, like you yeah. can get loads from anywhere. And these are out contract there. drivers, or are they employees yeah. of the company? All contract okay, drivers. Yep, yeah. no employees yeah. at the moment. And did you? Um, what was he looking for? He's looking for half a million dollars, but how does he want pay? And how did you finalize that deal? So he wanted a half a million dollars, and as I got digging into to what the company was actually worth, I'm like, again, historical performance, right? Like you had one okay year that was like one million dollars, then you doubled it to two million dollars. And then this year it's tapered off. Like you're not driving the same amount, you're not making the same amount of revenue. This thing's not worth half a million dollars. There's no way I'm gonna do half a million dollars to you. Um, and so I just quit talking to him. And this was the time my wife was diagnosed, like in May. So I I was talking to him in March and April. And then about August, I think it was, which was about the time my wife finished treatments. Um, they called me and said, hey, if you can come up with $100,000, they'll just let you take the company. So what was happening to the seller that he just started dropping the price like that? Seven years old. Yeah. Um, wanted to retire. Yeah. He's he's from China, and he wanted to go back to, to his home land from where he's at. Um, and I just don't think, you know, running a trucking company can be hard. Uh, they're expensive. Obviously, like every time I turn around with one of these trucks, there's a repair. It's like fifteen hundred bucks out of pocket, just just like yeah, that. Yeah, right? like, yeah. Every every time, like even just the last four days, I probably spent like eight grand in repairs. Um, just on just on trucks or things that are broken or somebody turned too sharp and it tore the hose off the truck. Like just just crazy weird things. Um, but so I just start like okay, well. You know, let's let's start looking at it. I'll come visit. So I flew down to Houston, met with the seller, had the trucks inspected, everything checked out. Um, so these trucks were sixteen thousand. Uh, I mean, they're old trucks, right? They're, are no, they the these, big... these are. This is a different. So these. Oh, trucks that's are a, actually, I, I, Okay, yeah. okay, right. This is a. So the trucks. How so these old are twenty eighteen. That are worth about. They're worth about forty forty five to fifty thousand. Uh, these are the big. The big wheelers. Trucks, the, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. To Kenworth T680s. Um, and so I went out, looked at the trucks, I walked around, looked at the trailers. He was also selling another company that we're not obviously buying, but we were working on both at the same time. And so I was down touring his property, looking at his food distribution plant, the, the trucks, the everything in that area. I'm down there for a few days and spent some days with him. Um, and so I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'll see what I can do. Like, I mean, this makes sense. I had an investor lined up. He was ready to put money into the company. I had a couple other ca investors that were ready to put investment capital in. And well, what were they committing? Uh, how much? Um, what percentage? So total. You, all you need to come up with is $100,000. All right? I had to do was come up with 100000 but I wanted to raise 180 to get us so that we had money and then we had operating, right? Like, because okay. they're expensive. And what right? like, what did you offer and, these uh, investors? Like a split of the company or a split, split of yep, revenue? Equity. So yeah. I did a valuation. So I write out a full evaluation on the numbers. Here's what I think this company is worth. If you put in X amount, you get this percentage. What did you think it was worth? Um, at the time, uh, what did I do? I honestly I don't remember what the numbers were. I got the I mean, sheet. He's asking hundred thousand dollars. That's what that price. Because <laughs> I mean, the, the trucks and the trailers alone, right? Like, yeah. There's so asset got, value and the cash right. flow value. Yeah. The asset asset value, cash flow value. The taxes, he, they made it purposely look like they didn't make any money, which I understand, right? Like you take depreciation. They took a ton of depreciation off the trucks. I get sure, that. Sure, 100%, especially right. in the year you're going to sell it. Right. Um, so the trucks themselves, 50000 apiece ish, right? So, And how many of those? Five times 25 or five times 50, that's about $250,000, right? Yeah. Well, you had three refrigerator trailers, and those were worth about 30000 apiece. Right, so there's another ninety, so that's three hundred and sixty ish, three hundred forty. 
Um, and then you had two driver ones that were worth about 15 a piece. So, I mean, right so there, on, you're on paper, just an asset it looks value like alone. You, you're yeah. getting a deal. Right. Yeah. Uh, we, we're assuming some of the loans, and, and you know, that's, that's not a problem. We're going to have loan payments anyway. So we assume the loans, and we give them 100 grand, and we took the company. Yeah. Um, and uh, so. What was your split on this with uh, the investors? Mine was 62. 62? And, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and, that, and yeah, the investors always... offered equity. Was there some kind of revenue share also or distribution? Uh, well, like... there, there'll be distributions because of the equity that they hold, right? Okay. Like, so we'll okay. do, the, the Tile City monthly distributions because um, I can do the accounting, keep the numbers up to date, and then we can do reconciliation. We're going to hold back, just like a corporation, we're going to hold back 30% of the profits for the company to continue to operate. We're going to distribute 70% to the shareholders. Okay. Or to the, the, because it's a, an LLC. I do a series LLC with everything I do. Um, and so my company owns 62%. Um, okay. And then they own the combined four other partners on the other 38%. And you found these investors from where? It was networking, your, networking people. Yeah. yeah, networking, talking to people, just sharing what I'm doing on social media, um, talking to people, hitting up groups, family, friends, there's different. Just different things. Um, yeah. And so, no, I didn't put any money in. I just did all the research. I did all the work. I did the financials. I did the contracts. All of that. Who, um, who, who was doing the uh, getting the, the loads? I mean, the, the contracts with the companies to move to point A to point B. Who was doing at the that? Time, at the time, they were. Um, the, oh. the, so, it was a husband and wife running the company. And she was basically doing everything. He was actually a truck driver. So, he was driving most of the time. And that's yeah. part of what you wanted to sell to you, right? Um, but then as soon as I acquired it, I, I found a local Houston guy who had trucking experience that was basically working as my driver manager. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's how we acquired that one. And what and did you been, promise him? Because was it how much was it thrown off cash flow? Can I was thrown off enough that I could pay for a manager. So he was making a salary. Okay. We were we were doing enough that that wasn't a problem. Plus, we had the operating capital or zero reserve, right? Like until this thing yeah. gets up and rolling, like an average truck, an average semi truck in gross revenue, if it's super active, can generate anywhere between seven and ten thousand dollars a week. Um, your, yeah. your driver pay and your fuel cost are about sixty percent of your cogs, and that's that's the thing you see a lot with these smaller companies is they don't rec recognize fuel as being a cost of goods sold. I like if you can't, if you don't have fuel, you can't get the truck anywhere. That's it's part of COGS. The driver pay is part of COGS because the driver's not there again. But so I figured 60% of that. But then outside of that, you don't have a lot of expenses. Your insurance is your next phase is this. Um, because the insurance for these That's trucks you, is, you, know, you, you might imagine dollars on each truck, right? <laughs> it's insane. Because if those right? trucks hit anybody, you're in trouble. Yeah, they're, the, the, the insurance on those. And then if you're doing refrigerated loads, you also need like a contingent cargo insurance. So if anything breaks, you're in shoot, your cargo is covered. Right. So, so we acquired this company. We hired a driver manager, put him to work. All the trucks break down. Every single one of them, like all five, just dead. All at the same um, time. All at the same <laughs> time. It took us six weeks. It took us six weeks to get three trucks up and running. It was. And nuts. Did you, were like, you down there doing that, or were you? No, no he was oh. taking care of it. Like we had a shop, we were partnered with a shop that was down there. Um, they did some pretty good work and get us in there. And then, like, no, not even kidding. Like, if you want to talk horror stories and stress and like what it's like to be an entrepreneur, we bought the trucks. One of the trucks we got finished, all ready to go. Drivers pulling out of the, the garage, windshield cracks. It, like <laughs> what? How does that happen? Um, the, he, he picks up the reefer trailer and then the refrigerator goes out. So it's not keeping anything cold now. Um, like just hit after hit after hit just constantly from, from the time that we acquired it. And I mean, still, like it's just a nut. So, um, you know, it, it's taught me a lot about like my personal stress, how I deal with, you know, troubles and problems and, and all of this too, because 
you, you still got to find a solution. You still got to find a way to pay this stuff off and, and yeah. get things was rolling. The, so, was the company profitable before you bought them? Or did they say it was profitable? He, it, it, in his it, IRS it looked, tax document, 1120, they're not profitable because he's expensive. They're not, but you can see that, like, so I, 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 pulled, I have the taxes. I looked at it and I'm like, okay, well, they did $300,000 $300, in depreciation. Uh-huh. Right. So right there, there's your, there's your profit. Right. Like, so it's basically $300,000 on 2.1 million in revenue the year before. And trucking 10 to 15% even on is a is pretty number. Um, so 2.1 would expect to see 210,000 in profit. So they've grown off 300. So, you know, marginally profitable because he's driving to you. So that that's accounting for some of that $300,000. Um, yeah. and so, yeah. We, we bought it and it's been an interesting adventure. Um, we're how, now. How long have you owned it now? In September. Six, six months. Yeah. Six have months. Have you got it? I mean, it sounds, still sounds like a patient that's still uh, in. Yeah, I kind of plan on, I planned on it being rough for about a year, which, if you talk to a lot of people in, the, in this space, Unless you're buying something that's like this massive or everything's already in place, you know, tons of capital, so on, right? It, you can kind of expect some of that, right? Like you're going to have some of that weird, awkward transition while you're kind of figuring it out. Yeah, they call it a J curve. Like, it's just going <laughs> to tank. It's like a, like a hockey stick. Up. It's going like this. That, you know, the, the, data, yeah. the data intake that you have to take when you go into the industry is just like... Right, like I didn't know what a lane was when I first bought the, the freight brokerage. You know, I'm like, okay, this this lane and this kind of trailer and this does this and this does this and um you know, it's it, it was a huge massive learning curve. But it's been really, really good. I mean we're still we're we're down at Houston Steel running fracking said or oil wells. Um but then I'm like, okay, well what's next? It's all for interest rate. Well, hold on. Let me. What What are you generating in revenue now? What is it throwing off in cash flow? Uh not great. Uh, it's not great right now. So we still got some trucks broken down. So right now, it's still negative. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So this can be a, a lesson learned. Like it's it's been a struggle. Right. Like like you said, every time it's around, it's like I'm putting fifteen hundred dollars into repairs. It, it, yeah. So we generate. We generated a couple of weeks ago. We generated ten grand in revenue ish. Right around ten grand. After we paid for fuel, drivers, repairs, the chassis rental, we walked away with 500 bucks. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's getting there, but it's still a long way. Like, we, we yeah. obviously need more Is there trucks. any daylight? Like, what you have oh, yeah. to do to get to there? Well, it's, it's the, uh, economies of scale, right? Like, so now we've got, we've got some stuff on dedicated routes, and the dedicated routes pay a lot more than, than what you would find on what's called load boards. Um, but now it's getting more trucks under us that we can go and, and scale what we're doing, right? Because these trucks can consistent put off, work, right? It's consistent it's, work. It's, the, the work right. is consistent. It's not the work right now. It's the number of trucks that we have bringing in the consistent work. Yeah. Because if you're not owner operator, if you're not driving the truck, then then the money's got to go to the driver, right? Like, yeah. So you get what's left. Um, and if they don't hit, like our break even point is five loads a week that they have to run round trip. And they don't hit five loads, we're not making any money. You're not making money. So yeah. um, we've had a couple of weeks where they've done really good. We had a guy hit 13 loads um, in one week. We had another guy do eight. So we're we're on our way. It's just it's just slow and go. Yeah. What what do you need to do to get past this to see better daylight? Oh. I mean, more trucks is a, a huge more trucks. Like, more trucks um, that are in not necessarily in better shape, but we need tr- more trucks that or go out and acquire another entity, right? Like, so it's it's either you, you you can't cut expenses because really the only expense you have right now is repairs, driver, insurance, and gas. Right. So what are you going to cut? Because you can't go do a job without gas. Can't. You yeah. need a driver. You have to have insurance. This is supposed to have that. Um, so you can either grow through acquisition, which is what we're doing right now. Um, I've got a, a deal flow of about 15 different trucking companies that I'm looking at right now. Okay. Um, and then, so what was this? Know, well, let's go on to this next one. This uh, 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 furniture store. Yeah, furniture store. So, What's that? Uh, um, this, this is an interesting uh, – and, and part of it is, again, it's vertically integrating, right? Like furniture stores get freight from the Philippines, Vietnam, China. 
turkey, so on, right? Like a lot of them do. Um, so I have a freight brokerage. So I can now broker my own freight from another country, get it to the U.S. to a port, and then eventually get to use my trucks to drive it to the source um, and make money every step along the way right yeah um, they're all they're all separate entities and so it would be this contract hires this contract and just kind of arm's length figuring it in place type situation right um well i had been looking at a furniture store in kentucky for i don't know a year maybe not even a year that's a way that and why, then, I, why kentucky well, <laughs> i just found it i, I just found it <laughs> i don't know i don't know why yeah. kentucky um the the east obviously is more densely populated than, than a lot of places in Utah. Um Utah they're just I mean, there's a lot of businesses for selling all of this all I'm saying. Yeah. But in terms of businesses that are for sale here versus what you find other places, it's it's not even close. Um but anyway, so I had been talking to this guy, I found him in some kind of group on Facebook. And he's like, Hey, I have a furniture store for sale that I'm gonna be selling. And so I just started talking to him about it. Um, and series of events happen. I don't know if you want the full story because I know the full story, but it, I can just like skip to the important pieces. Um, yeah, so, do... so just tell me like you're having it's an off market deal. Yes, yeah, off market uh, deal. No broker involved. Nothing like that. No broker. He's the owner of the store. He's the owner. He he owns 100 percent of the company, and we're just talking like we just keep going back and forth through email and text and phone calls and why and why does he want to sell? So he bought it from I think it was family. Um, and he owned a construction company also, and he's like, this thing just, I'm not meant to work retail. I, yeah. I, it makes good money, and it did. Like, so um, what, what, the, what were the top line, bottom line numbers on it? So his first year that he took over, it was half a million, bottom line, or top line. His next year, he almost hit a million. Okay. Um, in a small town in Kentucky. We're talking small town. What kind of furniture um, does it sell? Just regular, like Ashley furniture. So the majority oh, of Ashley. furniture okay, vendors, yeah. the majority of furniture vendors buy Ashley furniture wholesale and then sell. Uh -huh. I did not know that until I a furniture store. Um, they, the, a lot of them use the same vendors all all throughout the process. And so he's carrying these brands and get that and you get it wholesale and you mark it up and then you sell it. So yeah, his his first year owning it, he did like a little over half a million. His next year owning it, he did almost a full million. So basically doubled his revenue. Oh, he's doing something year. right, right? Yeah. Was it more marketing, more advertising? No, he wasn't doing any of that. It was all just word of mouth. He was just taking really good care of people. Um, he's oh, a good guy. He's yeah. a really good guy. Um, and he just really cared about people. And he was there like almost every day. So you can see like why he wouldn't want to do that. If you're trying to run a construction company and you want a furniture, you have a furniture store, that's going to take up a lot of time. You need somebody that knows furniture. And I didn't know there were so many nuances in furniture. And so, you know, I were talking and going back and forth, and I got a call out of the blue one day from, from my friend. He's like, hey, I know this guy. He's in furniture. He's been looking to do government contracting. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know how to do that. Like, you haven't given me a call, and we'll just talk through it. So he and I talk and, and go through everything we're doing, and I teach you, like, hey, yeah, you need to do this and this and this and this, and this is how you register for government contracts. And then you out and bid, and here's the website and, and all of this stuff. And so I'm talking to him, and about about a couple weeks later, I'm like, well, he's in the East. He lives in Massachusetts. Why don't I see if he wants to go in with me on it, right? Like, he knows furniture. He knows all about the industry. Like, he could go down there and run it because he's like, I don't care if I live here or not. I can go anywhere. Um, and so we called and started talking, and so he knows a guy that does furniture liquidation. And so he calls this furniture liquidator and he's like, Hey, I've got a really good deal for you. It's in North or in Tennessee. This guy just really wants to get out. He's got a, you know, a lot of debt and he just wants to be done with the furniture business. And so I'd already been looking at one. It was in Kentucky and looking up on a map and I noticed that this one's two hours away from this other one. So they're within driving distance. So after I went to Houston um, on that trip to acquire the, furniture companies uh, or the checking company I went to Tennessee to look at furniture stores oh. let's see. Um, so we had talking to the, the owner in the Tennessee one and he's like yeah I just want to be done like I can't do this anymore it's too much stress like I can't I can't do this yeah 
Um, so we settled on an agreement to buy an out for twenty dollars, um, plus assume plus assume some debt that he had. The debt payments. Debt payments, but yeah. we also take all of the inventory at the same time. Um, so you know, there's the offset there, right? He, like he just wants to unload it. He I just mean, wants to be done. He just wanted to be done. He. So he this was, was before you got the Kentucky deal. Um, or, I didn't end up closing on the Kentucky deal. Oh, you never got the Kentucky. No, I never oh, okay. got the Kentucky deal. Like I, I tried to make the numbers work, and we finally settled on like I think it would just be too hard to staff. I like it's in, it's in a rural town in Kentucky, like rural town. Um, and so we finally were like, well, it's twenty minutes from a military base, but uh, who are you going to find to run it? Like, how hard is it going to be to get employees in there and keep employees in there? And we finally just kind of like, yeah, this just isn't going to work. Like there's just there's just no way we can make this work. So we walked from that one, and then ended up buying this other one, um, which looks like a hell of a lot more challenging. To it fix. has been very challenging. It has been extremely challenging. We're, we're getting ready to relaunch our grand opening. We did a liquidation event for a couple more months, finished the year off that way, and now we're rebranding and um, relaunching it as a new brand. So, so we're who we're right there. <laughs> Yeah, so who is this other this guy from uh Massachusetts that you said? Yeah. Yeah, his name's yeah, Dustin. He came down and he's managing it. You're clearing out inventory, you're trying to get sales going. Uh where are you at with that? Um so we're we're doing Okay. We'll do an okay. I don't wanna lie and, and and make it seem like everything's on the We're no, definitely you're, on you're, yeah. we're definitely headed in the right direction. Um to the point that we just acquired another store in outside of Houston in Baytown um, as well. So we've got a couple of stores now. Um, you and got, him together? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so we bought a couple more stores. Um, we're looking to continue to expand in that, that arena. The margins are good um, in what we're doing. So it's just, it's getting both of these, the, 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 I don't want to call it a failure, but the part where they missed was the marketing. They weren't marketing. They weren't getting people in the door. The the employees were not of the best caliber in terms of like what they would do. Uh, they would they would dress sloppily and they'd, they'd look like you know you want them to to represent the store in in a way that looks good. And so there's some things that we're working on tweaking and and mass hiring and doing some things right now that we're ramping back up to to launch it at a, a larger scale. So yeah, and this is the Tennessee did, store, and then there's yeah, a Houston. the Tennessee yeah, okay. store last year did. Two point seven million top line. And you bought this um, for twenty bucks. Yeah. Yeah. It's and just, is it profitable now? <laughs> it's, um, it, it's it's getting there. Um like again, we're we're taking care of some of the debt in the process, and so that's that's okay. part of the getting to profitable, right? What what kind you of know? debt was was this? Was it with banks uh, or was it there, with the suppliers? a little bit of both. A, yeah. a little mixture of both. So a little bit of a, an SBA loan, um one one small MCA loan. And then um, some vendors that, that they owed some money to. So yeah, and you have to refi those somehow. Well, yeah. we're we're just paying them off. Like we're paying we're them off. We're, we're calling them. We're like, hey, what what, how, what would you guys you take? Somebody else's SBA loan. Um, you just tell him I'm going to pay through. Yeah. Right. Okay. You can. Some SBA loans are assumable. Um, a lot of them are not. Yeah. Um, and so we just we made an agreement that we would work on trying to take care of it. So, so. this Tennessee store. Over two million bucks, still not profitable because of the debt. So you're trying to get rid of yeah. that. What, what, yep. When do you think that that's going to happen? Um, I anticipate based on like what we're seeing. If I had to, the the goal is to have it. I mean, by August, get the rebrand, get the signs up, get consistent ads going, TV, radio, internet. Um. Because the only things that they were doing was paying Google five hundred dollars a day. Five hundred dollars a day. Yeah. A day. Google five hundred dollars a day. There's no ROI on them. They're... No, not really. No, okay. I mean, not not in terms of like what you're. I mean, just like anything, right? Like with, with you've got to have a targeted like who are you marketing to? It was just they were just paying for SEO, so that they could be on the top of the search results. Um, yeah, that's, and that's you know every day for three hundred sixty five days here. Except for weekends, they didn't go on the weekends. But they go on Monday through Friday. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was it was nuts. I'm like, this is this is crazy. You know, like you're dropping fifteen hundred fifteen fifteen hundred a week on Google ads and you you know, where's your tracking? How do you know that you're getting any benefit from this whatsoever? Right. I... So so yeah, so it's it's been interesting. And then yeah, yeah. we just we just went into Houston in Texas. Um, we've owned so what are these stores you bought in Houston, Texas? Uh, they're furniture and, and furniture mattress as well. Yeah. And, and you guys, where did you find that store? Uh, say it costs us. So actually, I found it on Biz Buy Sell. Um, uh-huh. And I found it where it wasn't listed by a broker. It was just listed by a guy. Um, For sale by owner. There, yeah. Yeah, there's tons of those on Biz Buy Sell. Like tons of them. You just have to do a little research. Um, ask some good questions. Just talk to them. It was like, hey, let's... What do you need? What are you looking for? What are you trying to get out of it? Just asking really good questions and hearing what they have to say. Um, yeah. I think so that's what a big was his thing. For, so, so tell me about the top line and the bottom. Was it profitable? So it he, was profitable. Was it, did he say it was profitable? Yes. And it, and it is, but he wasn't really running it as a furniture store. He was running it as a, he owns the real estate. So he was more concerned about the real about estate. About the cash the, flow, paying the mortgage on the real estate. Or did yeah. he own the and, real and estate? And then some side income on the on top of that. Gotcha. So um, I, I think it's it's been good. And, and, you know, it's still an exploratory situation that we're working on. Like, does it make sense to stay in this building? And we move somewhere else where we can get more traffic? Because the city is a huge city. But, like, the population of the city that we're in is 90,000. So it's not like a small town. Um, but yeah. the location isn't necessarily ideal, so we're we're working on we're being a liquidation in it right now down there. Um, we do that when for about you got the days. financials, was he making money? Yeah, did he value as inventory? We sold it. We bought it at sixty grand. Sixty grand. So basically yeah. inventory. Yeah, yeah, inventory, and then like some some extra. Yeah. Um, so it essentially was six thousand dollars sale. And then, and then them over, pay over, over a year. Okay. And the rest over a year. And inventory was on consignment. And your partner came down and said, hey, he's, we got to do this to turn it around. Yep. And he's down there right now, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Yeah, we're running a liquidation like, right now. Like, when are you going to see the daylight on that? Um, That one actually hasn't been too bad because we don't have a lot of overhead on that one. Um, Like, our rent down there is like $4,000. No. So if we sell... For pieces, we're for break even. Anyway. Gotcha. Um, the one in Tennessee, the rent's sixteen or ten thousand dollars a month. Um, so obviously the break even a... point on that one's a lot higher. But it's yeah, a yeah, sixteen thousand yeah. square foot warehouse. Does it the need one to in, be? Yeah. I mean, we can fill it up. Like we can get the, I can get a fifty-three foot truckload of furniture for less than twenty grand, and that stuff will retail for about forty to fifty. Yeah, gotcha. the margins are the margins are really good in furniture and mattresses. So you're buying these turnarounds. I mean, what mm-hmm. what are you you know what are you feeling about this? Like everything seems like it's gonna it's you like those <laughs> you know those people that are have china plates on those uh, yeah right those strings and they keep spinning them like something's gonna drop something's or gonna hit. Just... Well, it, the the idea is to. I, I, didn't get into turnaround slide on purpose. I it just yeah. Again, the the deal kind of just showed up. It was like, okay, do you, do you, I had to really think like, is this something you want to take on? Can you do this? Can you find the yeah. right people? Can you can you get the systems implemented? Like, can you do it? Um, that was the first thing. Originally, I wanted to just buy stuff that I didn't have to touch and owner or manager managed, and and ideally that's where I want to go. Um, these just came. When they came, right? Like, and they yes. provided stable income and, and everything that I needed. So, um, are, but, are they actually throwing off cash to you? That, yeah, enough, you're enough in the that, expense column. Yeah, enough that that we're okay to, to get paid and, and take care of some things. Like, gotcha. It's it's it's, it's not great by any stretch of the imagination, but it's it's enough. Um, yeah. To, to where it's you know again, and if you fix company, the problems, it'll be better. It's going to be amazing, right? Like exactly. Right? You know, you you buy it for twenty bucks. Like, I'm already ahead. Our first month, we did three hundred thousand dollars in revenue. Like, it's it decreased from there because we we uncovered some issues. But you know, we did we did. What issues grand. did you uncover that you didn't um, see? 
there was some some theft going on. It's um, I oh, some, some employees were stealing stuff. Yeah, they were stealing inventory. They were doing cash transactions, and then um, they wouldn't get any inventory numbers. So they would do cash transactions, and the inventory would walk out the door. Um, Holy crap! And I assume some of this was happening with the old owner, but he didn't know. Um, you know, and that's not his fault to, yeah. to a degree, but. Dude, no, it, you, you spent so, 20 bucks on it. That's what you bought. Right. <laughs> Already made it back. But, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, you device something like that, you can expect to have challenges, right? Like, it, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's a good deal for a reason, but that means that you're going to probably have to put in a lot of work, right? It's not going to just be this walk in the park. Like, if it, it, it's cheap or easy, they're like cheap and easy, right? Like, it's not going to be cheap and be easy. It's, you know, if it's easy, it's probably a lot more expensive. So, yeah. Well, there's always going to be some uh, elbow uh, grease, oh, yeah. you know. There's always going to be transition. There's going to be there's going to be problems. There's going to be culture changes. People don't like how you run things. It just you can't have all that. It's just yeah. part of buying a business. You should expect it. So you're in it. You're deep into it right yeah. now in this turnaround yeah. game, and it's not. There's not daylight to it yet. What if you like, you know, your wife said, Hey man, this is causing a lot of heartache or are you managing the stress without showing? I would say that I wasn't managing the stress very well in November. Um, so November we had closed on both companies. We just acquired both companies. Um, and I'm talking just recent November and I'm pretty, pretty good at managing stress. Like I always have been. The world is burning down around me. I can like sit and figure out like what do I need to do. Um, I worked in fast food. Like that's just part of the territory. Like everything's a chaos. Everything's mad brush everywhere. Um, so in November I got COVID, and my wife got COVID, and my son got COVID, and my daughter got COVID, and I got it really really bad. Um, to the point that I was sick for the entire month of November. Like the entire month of November. Yeah. Um, I didn't get better until like the 5th of December, I think it was. Um, and so during that time, I was sick and I was so stressed out. I was clenching my fists when I slept and just like clenchy, clenchy, clenchy like all the time. Well, um, you can't really see it anymore. My fingers have gone down and swelling. I tore the tendons on my index and my middle finger. Um just changing my clothes. I was changing my clothes and snapped, and my finger wouldn't go so straight. So you're tight. It's like, it's like a piano string. Just, yeah, huh. just snapped. Um, it, I heard the pop, like, and then it wouldn't like straighten. I'll have to send you a picture of it. You'll, you'll appreciate the picture. It was weird. Um, but I have to sleep still with these splints on my fingers at night so that I don't clench my hands. Yeah. So that month, it was a lot of like, you're not going to ever be able to do this. This is a train wreck. Why would you ever why would you ever take on anything like this? Like, this is stupid. Um, you're an idiot. Like, beating myself up constantly, day in, day out, day in, day out. Like, just over and over and over and over. And finally, I was like, you know what? You can do this. Like, you you can do this. Like, even if it falls apart, what's the worst that happens? Company's closed, and you just go do it again. Right? Like, yeah. You already know the steps. You've already done it. Like, this is what you asked for. Quit being scared and just just go. Maybe you got some bad people working with you, like whatever. Like analyze what the situation is, and let's just take the next step. Take the next step. Take the next step. Take the next step. Um, and so that's why things are things are better now. But like, yeah, man, it was rough. Like, and I think the final turning point was we went on vacation in January. It, let me let me ask you yeah. about that. Was it because you took too much on? I mean, you definitely glutton for punishment taking yeah three things um, on in a 12 month period so oh, that's part of it's that like it, you know, part of it is that the life of the house too right like well if somebody's not doing it right i'm just going to take it over and just do it and that's okay when you're buying companies that's the wrong attitude to have like you can't do this if somebody can do this 80 percent as good as you pay them to do it you just need to follow up you need to make sure that they're doing it you need to hold them accountable just like you would if you were to have a job you can't do their work for them. Help them learn how to do it. If they don't have the skills, don't hire them in the first place. And and make sure that you're you're holding them accountable for what they're doing. Yeah. So yeah. 
I agree that's that. what's really yeah. turned to turn it over is that they need some people in place that, that know what they're doing and that we got you know we have a scheduled 10 minute call every day like it's not anything crazy like i'm not on the phone all the time anymore that's not what you said like when you want to schedule like whatever works like this is fine um yeah but it, it, you know, holding them accountable making sure that the veterans are in place watching the numbers knowing what where we need to be um and so yeah i think there's there is daylight um like things are going pretty good um and, and it's this just, partner you're working with now you like him better yeah, trustworthy yeah, he's a good guy yeah. he's he's a pretty good guy we, we get along pretty good uh, we chat every day um yeah and he steps in and does that's why he's down running the event right now like he knows so much information he's down there with putting up signs and talking to customers and getting systems in place and doing all of that yeah so yeah it's been it's been a journey so now you know eyes on the next one <laughs> we got these <laughs> maybe you should let this digest a little bit and that's uh, up to you yeah turn these around yeah, yeah so I mean, this is not for everybody. Turnarounds are no. not for everybody. <laughs> Mergers and acquisitions aren't for everybody. Like, yeah. it, you know, I look at like, the groups like. So thanks for being on the show, John.